Well, um, yeah, thanks very much for doing this, uh, Jonas, and uh, congratulations on the film. I, um, I, I saw it twice. I saw it back at Tribeca, and then I also saw it at um, New Fest, so, yeah, more recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. Um, I think one of the things that really uh, struck me about the film is that, you know, I think far too often when it comes to uh, talking about refugees in, in the media, um, they're sort of often demonized and politicized and, you know, usually at best it comes down to sort of quotas and numbers, but very rarely do we get sort of individual human stories as we do in Flea. Um, and I wondered, you know, to what extent that might have been part of the draw initially of telling uh, Amin's story. Yeah, you know, I, I really think it comes from the fact that it's told from the inside of a friendship. I've known him for 25 years. Um, so, of course, there's a lot more. I've, I'm able to give a lot more new ones to the refugee story because uh, to me, he's not just a refugee. You know, often refugees are just described on what they need. Uh, but to me, he's so much more than a refugee. So it kind of uh, shows that complex psychological creatures we all are uh, in, in a refugee and and uh, yeah i'm really hoping that that the film will give a human face to the refugee story yeah and as you mentioned you've been friends for a long time and we, we obviously see that through through the film as well so when did the um the idea of making this doc documentary come about um, you know, I was always curious um, about his story. He arrived in my little Danish village when I was 15. Um, and uh, already back then, I was curious about how and why he got there. Uh, but he just didn't want to talk about it. But, you know, the, the curiosity has always been there. And as our, our friendship grew, it was, you know, it was always present, this curiosity. Um, but he didn't want to talk about it. And then I have a background in radio documentary. And, and I think like 15 years ago, I asked him if I could do a radio documentary about his story. And he said that he didn't feel ready, but he knew that he would have to share, share his story at some point. And uh, when he was ready, he would like to share it with me. So I kind of, you know, I had it as an idea in the back of my head that this was something that we could do at some point, um, but just didn't, hadn't found the form yet. Um, and then eight years ago, I was invited for this workshop in Denmark called AniDocs, where they combine animators and documentary filmmakers to develop ideas for animated docs. Um, and they asked me if I had an idea. And I thought, okay, but maybe this is the way to to tell his story. And, and I yeah, met yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And I met, I met him and asked him, and, and he finally said yes, and he felt ready to, he, well, he actually felt a need to share his story. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that he could be anonymous behind the animation really freed him to share his story because, you know, what you see in the film, what you hear in the film, is the very first time he, he tells the story. Um, and the fact that he, you know, wouldn't meet people in the street who would know all of a sudden, you know, his innermost secrets and his traumas and would want to small talk about it was really um, helpful. Yes, yes. So, um, I mean, th th that's one thing that it um, kind of reassured him as a subject. But um, I mean, for you as a filmmaker, what did um, using animation kind of open up for you? How did it maybe surprise you and the way that you were able to tell the story? Well, you know, as, as a documentary filmmaker, you're always kind of searching for what, how do you, uh, create presence, how do you make it feel alive again, especially when you deal with things that happened in the past. And animation could really do that. You know, we could really re revitalize Afghanistan in the 80s and his childhood home and show it and put him there. Um, but also because this is really a story about uh, memory and trauma. And, and with the animation, we could really be a lot more expressive uh, and be more honest to his, towards his emotions than we could have been with the camera. Yeah. And, and and tell me a little bit about your choice for the um, the style of animation and also the way that um, you know you use different styles at, at some point um, you know uh, during the movie and also occasionally um, some archive footage live action archive footage. Yeah, so it was really um, a long process of you know finding different references and and we also took some wrong turns here, here and there and and tried something out and it didn't feel right at some point with this did this test and you know it became a little toony you know they had they had they, all the characters had, had big eyes and and the line was very straight and somehow it became a little detached from the testimony you had underneath so we kind of went back and kind of thought okay but it needs to feel authentic we need to get the authenticity you have in the real testimony and put that in in the animation as well so we spent a lot of time just, you know, researching archival footage and taking things directly from the archival footage and putting it, redrawing it, putting it in the animation. So it felt like we could go from animation to archival footage seamlessly and it would feel like 
a part of the same world. Um, and then there's these different, this more simplistic kind of animation, which really came from his voice again. Uh, you could tell when he started to talk about something that felt um, he couldn't really remember or he had a hard time talking about something traumatic. And you could tell his voice changed. And I thought, okay, well, you need to see this in animation as well. So we would go into this more uh, graphical kind of animation, more simplistic, that felt so much, so somewhat more honest what's his emotion, you know, because all of a sudden it didn't, it wasn't about what things looked like. It was about his emotion. It was about feeling scared or afraid or angry. Um, so um, it was a long process of really getting these elements fit together and, and, and but, but, in the core all the time was this testimony underneath and, and having it feel authentic. And I love the way that you um, handle Amin's uh, sexuality in the film. And just as you were saying, you know, he's he, he happens to be a refugee, but that is not something that um, is a de completely defining feature. And similarly, his, his sexuality is not, but it's an important part of, of, of who he is too. Um, and you know we we see him running around as a child in his, uh, his sister's uh, clothes, which is a really great moment. And the Jean Claude Van Damme, there's a lot of sort of um, joy there. Um, so give me a little bit of um, an insight into uh, yeah portraying his sexuality, and I guess a lot of that came from the way that he spoke about it with you, because obviously we hear we hear his words, but that would have guided you. Yeah, but you, you know, um, Amin came out to me when he was 16. I was 16, so so to me, you know. Yes, he was gay, but that was very a very natural part of who he was. So I thought this needs to feel the same in the film. Um, but then in the process of making the film, I realized, okay, but you know, in his childhood, all the way until he arrived to Denmark, he had to hide his sexuality. Uh, and and then when he arrived in Denmark, he had to hide his past. So he's always had to hide a part of himself. Um, and so yes, the, the story is called Flee, and it is about a flight going from Afghanistan to Denmark. But you know, it's 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 really a story about uh, a guy who has had to flee himself all his life um, and is looking for a place where he could be who he is with everything that, it, that, that entails, with his sexuality, with his past. Um, so I, I wanted it to feel natural that he was gay, um, but also to show uh, what it does to someone to have to hide parts of yourself. And, and the, the scene in the, the gay club, I know we don't want to give sort of too much away about that, but it, it, it's so um, beautifully moving and, um, you know, and I felt that it fitted in with the, the theme of, like you say, his, uh, the fleeing, but also trying to find home as well, which is a kind of re recurring theme. And it felt at that moment, oh, he really found a, you know, a version of home. It can be lots of different places, but that, you yeah. know. Um, I don't know, you maybe want to give us a little bit of an insight into that, because really, it's a really beautiful sequence. Yeah, you know, it, it was really, I was, you know, surprised when he told me that story. Um, and, um, you know, it's really about uh, his own prejudice against his own family um, as well. And I just wanted to, um, I, I was trying to, to, to just show, I wanted the audience to feel a little bit of the relief he felt himself, you know, he 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 carried this around for so many years, and he was certain that his family wouldn't be able to accept him as a gay man. Um, so the relief he felt when he finally came out and his family took him to a gay bar, um, I wanted the audience to feel that as well. Um, so of course we used the cinematic tools, so everyone thinks that he's being taken to somewhere else, not a gay bar, but a brothel or a strip club. Um, but it was. Um, I don't know if I'm spotting too much now, but <laughs> but it's um, um, I really wanted the audience to, to to feel the relief he felt. Yeah, no, very very much. Yeah, that's exactly the word that I <laughs> written down didn't say. So it's nice that you that you said. Um, and, and also the um, the relationship with his fiance Casper. That's very interesting. Presumably, because I know it's your real voice and the men's real voice. Presumably, it's uh, Casper's voice as yeah. well. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, so give me a little bit of insight into sort of portraying their relationship. He's very into trees. I like the way he points out the trees. Because um, again, there is an element of sort of fleeing within that relationship, I guess, isn't there? All his uh, amends trips to New York and, you know, yeah. being away a lot. No, but there was, and, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, when you make documentaries, there's these happy accidents. And, and when, when I started doing this film, uh, they started looking for a house. And I thought, okay, but, you know, 
being a refugee is fundamentally it's it's someone who's lost their home and is looking for a new place to call home or a new, a, a new place. Um, and I thought, okay, but here they are, they're, they're looking for a, a place. And either, you know, it's going to go well, they're going to find a place, going to settle down, it's going to be a happy end, or it's not going to go well. They might split up and, I mean, it's going to continue fleeing and it's going to be a tragedy. And I thought, okay, but uh, I'm going to follow this path and see how, how, how it goes. And, and so that was really, and I could see, you know, the friction between, I mean, and Casper because, I mean, wasn't being totally honest uh, with him. Uh, so, but again, you know, it's really about creating this human, more complex refugee story and, and having that in there was, was important. And, and early on, um, we see, I mean, you get him to like, like lie down and, and close his eyes, which is, which is looks beautiful. Um, but also, I mean, I think I mentioned in my review, it seems a bit like a therapy session, almost the, the, the conversation be, between you. So um, what does that approach do you think um, you know allow your subject to to do to open up in a way than perhaps just sort of you know sitting quite rigid in a chair like we're used to seeing in talking head interviews a bit like we're talking now you know the, the difference I guess yeah I think I think it really gave space for him to 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 take a deeper dive you know and we spent a long time we spent like three or four years 15 20 interviews uh, to kind of slowly go deeper and deeper re revisit the memories. And this type of interviewing, you know, I have a background in radio documentary, and this is a technique of interviewing that I used in radio before. And it's really because, you know, uh, when, you, when you do radio, you don't have an image, so you, you need your subject to be very descriptive. So by having your subject laying down, close their eyes, and talk present tense, instead of just retelling the story to kind of relive it, um, you start every memory with the subject uh, describing the location in detail. Uh, so, for example, in the beginning of the film, he's in his childhood home in the garden with the siblings and the sisters telling stories about their father. And then I would ask him what kind of plants are there, what, what trees, uh, what does the house look like, what do you see outside the walls? And that would give us a lot of information to uh, animate from, but it would also, you know, bring him back in the situation and create a lot of presence in his voice. Um, and he would generate new memories. Uh, he would start to remember things that he had a hard time remembering otherwise. So it's really a process of slowly getting deeper and deeper down. And I think um, if I would have just done a talking head interview, uh, he would just have reto retold the story from whatever just came at the top of his mind. But but here we really had time to go deeper and deeper down. And, you know, as, as we said at the beginning, you've, you've been friends for a long time, but did, did this whole, uh, you know, process of making the film over several years, you know, uh, evolve your relationship in some ways like to sort of take it to a kind of a bit of a, a deeper level do you think did you get to know each other a bit, a bit better no but definitely definitely you know I, I i i didn't fully understand how much what he's been through affected him in every day of his life and everything he's done in his life um and for him you know the fact that he was finally able to open up uh, you know keeping a secret um create some kind of distance to everyone around you because you're afraid of getting exposed um i didn't see that but i could i can see it now and i can see now that he's a lot more relaxed um so it's it's definitely it's it, we yeah we in touch all the time I, I wrote him just an hour ago so so it's um we, we became a lot closer well it's a beautiful and very powerful film so jonas thanks very much congratulations thank you so much